Berserker. All right, cool. <laughs> now this is take two. This is the final take. We're gonna nail it this time. And all, and actually now everyone's levels are good too, or they should be. Let me know in the chat if they are not. But yeah, let's go for it. Let's talk through all seventeen of these factions. Good. Um, so just to go over the advent, they can spend influence as resources when they follow technology or do technology. And then they can move bonus fighters into each system and have bonus fighters in each system. So they can do cool things like spend Mechatol to double tech and uh, move a destroyer and two fighters into a system and have it be a valid uh, movement. The drawn get paid to score uh, points off of objectives and they don't have to spend a token to resolve Imperial. Wow. And they can do a lot of cool shenanigans with... They also have uh, unique destroyers so king's the destroyer meta i guess yeah four times six baby <laughs> uh fighters die um the fsa can spend uncontrolled planets as their own uh and they um can produce ships and systems they that nobody controls so they're basically all the planets that nobody owns uniting against the rest of us awesome um until they're stamped out <laughs> the fremen they get money for winning ground combats they their infantry upgrade turns into money when it dies on occasion and they're better at ground combat they're all the ground combat parts of soul on drugs the geldor have uh, bonus production on their space docks and their space docks have planetary shield when you play them don't forget to get that free trade good for producing non-fighter ships. That's that's easily forgotten. The uh, Hussein, they start with Graviton. They get a free PDS off of construction. They can burn their PDS units to produce an extra hit on space cannon rolls. And then they can, as an action, spend a token to refresh all of their technologies. So this is the Fleets to Dust faction. Dope. Dope. The Ketrakol, or they, they have big guns. <laughs> the card's actually wrong. It's when you produce two infantry on a planet. You can produce up to two additional infantry. But oh. yeah, you get more dudes when you produce dudes. And then per space combat, you get a Courageous to the end. A lot of their powers in their faction abilities, so I'll actually just go over those for these guys first. Uh, their 1R lets you spend... It's like hegemonic trade policy, but you can spend the influence as resources in addition to the resources. And then the 2R is you can use sustained nice. damage to produce and assign a hit um, after a round of combat. So your flagship and war sun actually can use their sustained damage without fear for once. That's awesome. The Cortali Horde, they when they follow warfare, they can choose to do the primary of warfare. And then whenever they fight on a uh, an exhausted planet, they get to produce and assign a hit to the enemy forces. Um, they've historically also gone green red, which makes me happy. <laughs> the the Lazax, uh, classic. They have bombardment fighters. They can spend one planet twice during the agenda phase, and they can look at unrevealed objectives during the status phase. Whoa. Their three Y also lets them peek at secret objectives if they get there. The Mahakt are like Necrovirus, but they steal faction abilities. Their two blue lets them. Ba one of the cool things they can do is their two blue lets them jump, uh, to take one ship and make it adjacent to any of any system on the board. So they could go anywhere with one ship if they uh, get that two blue and they fulfill the uh, cost on it. Awesome. The Mandalorians are the most mean parts of Mentak. <laughs> Defterus loves them. They, uh, their cruisers, they have a cruiser upgrade and a carrier upgrade. Their cruiser upgrade rolls double dice as long as it is alone or has one, no more than one other ship in the system. So two of their cruisers can roll four dice total. Wow. And then, <laughs> yeah. And then they cancel a hit during the first round of combat, and they can give one ship capacity, uh, one capacity per tactical action. They're, uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 Joe. Um, 
the carriers also can, when you have a carrier in the system, you re-roll uh, one die per round of ground combat. So big on efficient fleets. Um, their flagship is also just two Dreadnought 2s duct taped together. I like the blue faction pack. Power faction. It was one of the probably four big ones. Um, the Navigators Guild, they turn their planets into the worst part of the gravity rift for everybody else. They are immune to the gravity rift's worst parts, and then they can put a token in a system and move it around later, and the promissory note moves it around as well. And that token will turn that system into all the basically the movement part of a nebula. You won't be able to move through that system. You can move into and out of it, but through is not an option. So generally how they get played is uh, people will create a highway of planets when they're already about to win so that people have to move ships through like six of their planets and roll six times on that first ability there. It's the highway of pain. It's, it's, it's fun when you're doing it. They also have a 2-5 home system or home planet. That's wild. Pretty that, cool. That one is really wild. I think I want to play that one. Uh, the Rodin Migrant Fleet, they can burn a ship to produce a ship in that system, and uh, they can spend their ships as votes. They uh, start with their flagship, and their flagship is basically Soul's flagship, but with fighters instead of infantry. Wow. The TEC uh, have, they get a bonus space dock off of construction. They can refresh themselves for each space stock they have. So one commodity to a trade good. So they don't care about debt meta. And um, they have a fourth space stock unit. Their three Y is also really strong because it's basically the secondary of warfare for them alone, but all of their space stocks. And they have a three planet home system. So it gets pretty good. Yeah, that's nuts. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> the Vasari are probably another one of the top factions, I think, is what basically it's shaken out to be. Um, purely because of that first ability, which is that their space stocks are adjacent systems. They, uh, I think That's Emu cool. loves them, so don't feed him these in the draft. <laughs> um, Dark Fleet lets you produce in your home system. It's pretty good. They're highly mobile and they're just good. This is fun. I'm going to play I'll a new game. I'll never admit these are my, uh, the Veldir are my favorite in the pack. Favorite child, but uh, their first ability, you get money when other people do the secondary warfare. Their second ability, you get kickbacks whenever you research a unit upgrade. Their home system is also Nebula, and then their Dreadnoughts have Space Cannon. Yeah, that's fun. It's it's a lot of fun. <laughs> and then last but not least, we have the Zeth. The Zeth are like a tuned-down version of Jolnar. Uh, they start Instead of with all four, they start with two uh, technology pre <laughs> baby nar. <laughs> they start with uh, two technologies with zero prerequisite instead of all four. They can spend their technologies as votes, and then they can turn one tech specialty planet into a wild card. They uh, two red is basically direct hit, and their two Y is basically fo focused research. And that's, awesome. That's a pack. Awesome. Awesome. 17 factions. That was actually pretty tight. That was pretty fast. You nailed that. Yeah. Totally, man. <clears throat> so, Hunter, and for the stream viewers, we really appreciate um, playing this on the stream because we also simultaneously wanted to announce that um, on the weekend of July 24th and 26th, we're going to do a blue space faction pack tournament. So probably the same format as the 14 point tournament with 36 players and six games and then a final like on a fall on a weekend after that um but if we get this one's open for application so if we get like 50 or 60 people who want to play then we'll adjust the format of the tournament accordingly so um it is not by invitation you are welcome to sign up and you can do that either on the tournament chat in the space cats peace turtles discord or on the tournament chat in the di4 discord and the draft structure for the tournament and the map for the tournament is what we're going to use tonight um so should i just talk about that now yeah 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 let's let's go into that 
Cool, cool. So the map everybody can see, it's called Clear Skies. And I think something that's important, like we talked about this for a second, but I mean, A, Tactic Blue has put a tremendous amount of work into refining and developing these factions with community input for sure. But like every week he's spending hours updating them and up and tweaking them and getting based on feedback and then like updating all the files because they're integrated into the TI4 um, mod. So they work with uh, combat rollers and everything. So um, anyway, that's a lot of work that he's sort of shepherding together. But yeah, there's a particular group of players who I've jumped on with late who have been testing them together for months. So they're really refined. And part of what they've done recently is test this map. So this map has also been refined for the tournament and the, it will be used. And basically what will happen for the draft of the tournament is everybody will sit at the table in a random spot, wherever you want, doesn't matter. You'll get a bag with four things in it. There will be three factions and a slice in five of the bags. So a slice marker, like a color marker or two factions, a slice marker, and the speaker token. So that's mm. step one. Step two is you choose and simultaneously reveal one of the factions in your bag, or if you're the person with the speaker, you have to reveal that. You don't have a choice. So this, these things will be revealed simultaneously, and that will probably be like the best factions that people have in their bags and the speaker because then you're going to pass your bag to the right like it was a franken draft or a bag draft mm -hmm. and so then in the second step like you'll just draw one of the other three things or one of the three things that's in the bag you've been passed so you could take a slice at that point or you could take another faction or whatever and you keep doing that until you've got four things the speaker and two factions and a slice or three factions and a slice and then uh, and you have to take something if you can. So you can't like get a bag with a slice and you and that's all you need and pass that on and wait for the next slice. So you have to take something. Um, and then once everybody's got their stuff, then we reveal people reveal their color, which uh, shows where they're going to sit. And then everybody would sit down and we'd say, okay, the speaker's sitting there. I'm sitting there. Blah blah blah. Once that happens, then the speaker will reveal choose or reveal the faction they will play. And then we go around the table from left to the speaker, like in speaker order, basically, um, revealing the faction. So the person who's going to pull strategy cards last has the advantage of seeing what factions everybody else is going to play before they have to pick out of their three, basically. That's awesome. Yeah, so it's a new method. We think it's kind of funky. And uh, we were going to go with a ban part of it. Then we realized why ban factions that like yeah. nobody knows yet. So <laughs> let's just play the factions. Um, but it should be different every time because those three that you get dealt in your bag are going to be different. So it'll mix it up. Anyway, we'll try it out and see how it works tonight together. Awesome. Awesome. I'm excited. Very cool. Cool. cool.